for the other teams, improved massively, and now are almost qualified. They're just a few steps away. It's one of those teams that it is enjoyable to watch their road. It is enjoyable to watch their road throughout the entirety of the tournament because I think a lot of people knew what their potential was, knew that they could actually answer a lot of these top teams. They were able to figure out the code quite a few times. They knew the right answer. It all came down to execution. They've had some bad games as well, like really bad games, really bad series. Then they come out the next week, they're able to beat that team. And they just keep going back to the drawing board, keep improving. Never Lucky is going to face their toughest competition though here in the Super Frogs. Yeah, Super Frogs, the number one point earners in North America right now. And this is a matchup I'd have to put in favor of the Super Frogs. It's just really difficult <laughs> for the Windwalker Death Knight to get any sort of pressure rolling. You can see Velthy Man getting bounced against the wall with that Ring of Peace. And maybe if Zack and Kolo, they can land these consistent Ring of Peace to deny movement with uh, two rings apiece or either a ring a piece into the wall, that might be something they look to do in this matchup. But Super Frogs so far, the only teams they've really struggled with in these tournaments are teams that are really good at Rogue Mage. Rogue Mage seems to be the one thing that Super Frogs has a difficult time with. That's why they lost to Mew Mew Kitty Cats, but never lucky they don't oh. have those compositions. Channel running the Demonic Circle again. This was a talent decision that he made in previous tournaments as well to deal with the Windwalker Death Knights. Although in this current position, he's right next to the Demonic Circle, that green circle next to the pillar. So Channel needs to reposition away from it if he wants to maximize its usage. Now trying to drag Valido and Zack into midfield to potentially expose Colo. Valido could be a playmaker as well, running that Dark... I believe he stole his Polymorph with the Dark Simulacrum. So Valido has a Polymorph that he can now use potentially on Cubsy. Grips Cubsy into a stun, but because Cubsy's in bear form, Valido cannot use that Polymorph just yet. He's waiting for him to come out. They use the Paralysis. They could chain it together into a Polymorph, but it's not gonna be super effective, unfortunately. That Dark Simulacrum not gonna be too valuable for Valido early on. Mana even at this point. Zack gets Gladiator's Maledict committed towards him. Diffuse Magic removes that immediately. Valido then gets swapped to, and this is the main strategy for the Super Frogs. Attack the Windwalker, scare him away, switch targets to the Death Knight, try and burst him down, and deeper in dampening, the Death Knight just simply can't escape, and that's the main win condition. The only X Factor really is Colo's Way of the Crane and Valido's Dark Simulacrum, which has stolen a Polymorph in this current situation, but Cubsy knew it was stolen and activated the defensive cooldown before the crowd control was initiated. That damage reduction cooldown soaked up all of the hits, allowed Cubsy to sit through the crowd control, but not entirely comfortably. Chanimal is still very low on health. He's just gonna go down. An ending resolve has to be exchanged as well. Huge swing for Never Lucky early on against the Super Frogs. Yeah, Chanimal just not creating the distance we've seen him need in the past to survive against a Windwalker Death Knight setup such as this. Now in the blink of an eye, Chanimal, no trinket, no uh, unending resolve, not a lot of defensive cooldowns left for the team of the Super Frogs. Cudsy was looking to get aggressive, but he got Polymorph by Valido, by that Dark Simulacrum, into a Paralysis from Colo, into a Leg Sweep, and if we can see Never Lucky sneak in these crowd controls, Valido can take a Polymorph from Wealthy Manor, he can take a Fear from Chanimal. That's the extended crowd control chain that can be paired with Polo's paralysis and leg sweep to really start allowing them to start generating a lot of pressure in this matchup. So Channel and Lefty, man, they're gonna have to be very careful with what they're giving Valido. Qualifications on the line here for Never Lucky. Can they stay in the tournament? They're maintaining their mana well here, which was a criticism that I have given Colo in past cups. Although now it seems like they have a lot more mastery of this composition are now able to extend the game into dampening, which is likely to be required for them. Cubsy with Thorns activated is trying to set his team up for some huge potential. Valido sees it, and magic shields absorbing the hits, denying the kill. Colo now free from crowd control. I'm really curious to see when Colo decides to make a maneuver with that Way of the Crane. He obviously wants to maintain his mana as long as possible, so potentially using Way of the Crane before dampening isn't high value. It's not a guaranteed kill, so he would rather just hold on to the mana later into the fight. Although in this window of opportunity, no one in resolve for another minute and 30 seconds, you would normally expect this to be an opportunity for Colo to make a push. Colo gets seduced by Chanimal. Pin down in midfield, unfortunately breaks to some damage, but they do get a polymorph. Good crowd control on Colo, but no damage just yet committed by the team of Super Frogs. Channel now activating Dark Soul, looking for a huge Chaos Bolt here shortly. Curious to see if he's actually able to get it. I really don't think he's going to be able to. Chaos Bolt casted, he fake casts, trying to fake out Bozak and Valida, but not able to. Now Colo makes the move with that way of the crane. This was the opening. 
with no unending resolve. Chanimal with great precision on that kiting. Demonic circles back and then uses the demonic gateway to get to safety, buying time for Wealthy Man to control Colo. Now with Colo in crowd control, Zach could be in trouble. He has to use Diffuse Magic, removes the Gladiator's Maledict, and reduces a ton of magic damage on himself, long enough for Colo to leave crowd control and then exchange Life Cocoon. However, this was not the Infernals of Chanimal. This was not the Icy Veins of Wealthy Man. Those are some pretty powerful spells that we could see activated shortly to punish that preemptive life cocoon. Counter spell secured. Could be an opening for Super Frogs if they can get anything off the back of it. Doesn't look like they can just yet, though. And Zach trades out his touch of karma to avoid that big chaos bolt Chanimal had ready for him. Dampening is rampening at 5% at this point in the game. What is Cubsy going to be able to do? So far, he hasn't been able to sneak away for drinks, which is what we normally see. Although, you can see Chanimal, he is using the Succubus, getting a Seduce on the Colo. That gets interrupted by a beautiful ring of peace from Zack. And Zack, to his credit, has been doing a great job playing back up for Colo in this game, interrupting all the Seduce cast from that Succubus with the Paralysis, with his Spear Hand Strike, with his Ring of Peace. And I think if Zack and Bleedo can be on point and deny that extra crowd control Chanimal really has available, Colo can continue to keep them up for an extended period of time. He will be able to keep him up for an extended period of time. Cubsy now tapped on mana and likely to need a drink here soon. But with that ghoul hammering away at his backside, it is unlikely that he will find that opportunity to sit down and regenerate mana, which means Never Lucky have a huge win condition with Colo having so much mana in the tank. Perhaps this Destruction Warlock Mage composition will be thwarted. Perhaps Never Lucky's improvements over time will be enough for them to overcome the top point earner in North America overall. Perhaps this is Never Lucky's time to rise, their opportunity to rise to power as Rich Campbell predicted earlier on, and who would have guessed it? Rich might actually be right. I don't know. There's one team called the Super Frogs standing in their way, standing in Rich's predictions way as well. And I don't know. Super Frogs are still looking good, but Cubsy with no mana is not looking that great. We're at 14% dampening. Colo has been doing an excellent job so far. Like we talked about, Never Lucky, potentially the most improved team here in North America, potentially the world this year. And you can tell how much they want it. They have a well-calculated plan. They're executing it quite beautifully in this matchup so far. Chanimal, although he has his unending resolve, back up. Like we kind of mentioned, if they can get another beautiful setup off the back of Alito getting a Dark Simulacrum, they can all in Chanimal and take him down quite easily. Let's see if they can accomplish that objective. They've got Iron Park out of the way. They're pressuring for an ending resolve. If they can get that before Way of the Crane, it'll be pivotal, but they're not finding it. Cubsy connects a huge heal channel, will stabilize. Zach now needs to be careful. Does not have much defense to work with, and he's in midfield facing Channel. Channel then demonic circles away, trying to kite and avoid. Drag Zach out of position. Colo in midfield. Gets seduced. Could be trouble for Zach. Catches a couple of vivifies around the corner. Wealthy Man can't get there just in time. Trying to get in line of sight. Blizzard will pin Zack down at the corner for Channel and Wealthy Man. Colo stuck in midfield and crowd controlled for so long. Now bashed. Zack tries to make a move, but it might be too premature. Huge hits from Wealthy Man. Life Cocoon gets crushed through by Channel. Zack retreats around the corner once again. Colo tries to get to his aid, but feared off to the distance. Zack manages to recover. Good crowd control like that has bought Cubsy time, though, to drink and regenerate mana. Suddenly, it's still anyone's match. Oh, it definitely is. 22% dampening, like we said, at 40% dampening. That Roughly that number, that's when Valido becomes such an exposed target in mid midfield against a composition like the Destruction Warlock and the Frost Mage. Never lucky is holding it together. Chanimal getting low, good pressure here. Asphyxiate stun onto Cubsy. And you can see Colo moves in as well. Gets a leg sweep onto Chanimal, looking to get aggressive. All three members looking for a push. Chanimal denies the kill for now with the unending resolve, but without that major offensive cool or defensive cooldown, Chanimal is very exposed in the situation. You won't have that available for another three minutes. 26% dampening. Do you really ever see him getting that back up? Uh, unlikely, but they've got a window. There's no unending resolve for three minutes. That's a huge window. Chanimal might just get destroyed. Demonic Circle, but he Demonic Circle's right on top of Colo. All right, now he gets seduced away, not able to do too much damage. Zach needs to retreat. He's very low on health and does not want to use Diffuse Magic before a Gladiator's Maledict attack, but now he's bashed. Vaulty Man can connect any damage here. He's got Ray of Frost. The Life Cocoon of Colo denies the kill for now. 
Chandramal still an exposed target. Mana totally even. It's anyone's match at this point. Valido once again with that Dark Simula Crumb could be the X Factor. Trying to steal something. What does Valido manage to steal is now going to be the question. Chandramal Demonic Circles expecting a Polymorph on Cubsy. Cubsy expects it as well. It activates Iron Bark, but it's premature. This could be an opening. Nicola just goes for the way of the crane. They could just knock Chanimal down here and give him one. Nice. Bring a piece on Chanimal. I want to see another one, but Zach is still low on health. Huge flurry. Wealthy Man just KOs him in game number one. Super Frogs continue to assert dominance in the North American region. Yep. I, the only thing I like about their comp is the Elemental Shaman. Yep. <laughs> okay, well, I will say there was one other composition today that we had a, a similar that visceral lost. reaction to. That lost. But it lost with dignity. <laughs> and the thing is, is <laughs> ne never lucky. Are they going to lose with dignity or will they win with a surprise? I'm sure Mew Mew Kitty Cats will be happy if they lose with dignity. Mew, Mew, Jamili right now, Jamili right now is just like two inches away from his monitor, just staring at the screen with a smile on his face, <laughs> cheering. If you win by an inch or a mile, it's still a win. Agree with that. Agree with that, Sid. Small victories are the same as... I don't even know. I don't know anymore. There, there's literally an elemental shaman, Moonkin, Holy Paladin in front of my face. I'm pretty sure Sid just quoted Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what that yeah. <laughs> Sounded familiar. Yeah. All right. What are they going to do? Channel Wealthy Man moving in. Zach already getting damaged very early on. And for Never Lucky, I really, I'm not sure what their game plan is. Who are they going to take down in this matchup? Cubsy's always going to be able to sit very far away. The control Wealthy Man and Channel have is going to force Packrat, Zach, and Valido to play very defensive and not be able to really pressure down the mana bar of Cubsy. Do you think that you're going to win in a late game in dampening? I mean, that's their only win condition, I think, is to focus on instant cast damage and try and avoid Chaos Bolts and Frost Bolts as long as possible and then burst somebody down with Star Surges and an Earth Shock. That's why I thought this composition on paper, but not so much so with a Paladin, would be at least acceptable. I now I think the Destruction Warlike Elemental would have been even much better, uh, and they have that option. We've seen Packrats play Destruction in the past, and we've seen Colo, of course, play Restoration Druid in the past, and I think that may have been the best option for them overall, but they want to give this a go. If they manage to win on Tolveron, though, at least they take one of the biggest maps out of the pool from the Super Frogs and then have a good answer for the big maps as well to lock in blind, potentially. They swap to Cubsy with a huge swing of damage. He is now able to recover. Now Packrat on the back foot as Baltimore secures a Polymorph over onto Zack. Although Zack seemed to have connected a huge heal to stabilize Packrats just before it. Wealthy Man now under attack. He's able to get Temporal Shield rolling and heal back to full as a result. Both teams trading evenly. Never lucky, surprisingly. Their mana is starting to establish a lead. Yep, definitely. We'll have to see how what they can get done in this matchup. The thing is, like I kind of mentioned, I feel like Cubsy is going to have an opportunity in this matchup to sneak away, go for consistent drinks, and Zach playing in this position really isn't going to be able to do the same thing. Packrats, he's already committed. It's Incarnation, a lot of his instant cast damage. And now the Moonkin threat really isn't going to be there. Polito's going to have to make sure he's getting a lot of pressure out. If Channel overextends or Wealthy Man overextends, I can see a world where Never Lucky starts generating pressure. But if they're ever in trouble, I just feel like Channel and Wealthy Man, they can pull back, get off the pillar, and they're going to have an advantage of spamming out wizard damage. Yeah, could certainly be the case here on Tolveron Arena, but of course, Never Lucky have already seen what happens to Melee Cleaves running into Super Frogs. They don't do very much running. It's more like crawling and then a very slow and painful death. So it's not surprising to see Never Lucky want to try something different here on Tolveron, although I think they could have considered potentially a better option than this. We'll still have to wait to see it play out as Never Lucky are focused entirely on just staying alive at the pillar. Wealthy Man's got a frozen orb on the three members. Channel Moment closes in on the left side. Wealthy Man on the right. And Zach needs to try and avoid multiple interrupts with this positioning. It could be difficult if at any moment he's counterspelled. And then they blink in for a kill. They're starting to fall behind. Valido catches a couple healing surge, but Channel Moon moves in. And I think the Super Frogs are realizing that they're a lot more stable than they think, and they could probably stand on top of Never Lucky and get away with it. And if they can manage to do that, I'm not sure how much longer Zach will hold out. I yeah, definitely have to see Channel tanking a lot of this incoming damage. Packrat, once again, going to be using that incarnation, looking to get aggressive. Actually, it was just a mini incarnation, so the main one will be up in 45 seconds. And that will be the added punch Never Lucky needs to start getting through some of the heals and defensives that Super Frogs has available. And I really only see Lucky, Never Lucky winning this matchup with a big all-in. 
with that incarnation, unless it's really deep and dampening. But at that point, I feel like Zach is going to start really struggling to heal through this damage. He's going to have to start casting out a lot more heals, and that's going to make him susceptible to Wealthy Man and Channel going for those interrupts. And that's where I feel like the Holy Paladin really is a vulnerability in deep dampening. I just don't know how he's going to keep his team alive. Dampening a double-edged sword. It's going to benefit and disbenefit both sides as we edge closer to it. No significant mana advantage for either side at this point. Obviously, Chanimal and Wealthy Man, their team focuses more heavily on hard-casted spells, which Never Lucky can more easily avoid at the pillar. Because of this, you would say on paper that Never Lucky have the composition advantage over the Super Frogs, but if they make even one mistake and catch a quick kill, Chaos Bolt during Infernals, then they could get just killed outright. Cubsy running the Feral Affinity actually could backfire on him if they can do an incarnation all in with the Triple Gladiator's Maledicts. I, I see that as a possible win condition for Never Lucky, and Cubsy will have to avoid the giving that opportunity as much as possible. Incarnation, big pressure here from Pack Rats as he's trying to take down Wealthy Man, but that gets denied instantaneously by Channel with the Infernal, with the Shadow Fury. Destruction Warlocks are just such a destructive force in World of Warcraft right now. They have a lot of crowd control at their disposal. And then I think with the amount of crowd control they have, Channel, if he's able to free cast, can just easily shut down Valido and Packrat, force some defensive. And look at Packrat. Oh, he can't get any damage rolling. Just getting crowd control. Valido's just dying. Zach, what is he going to do? Trying to connect some heals. Valido backs him up with a nice wind cheer. Cubsy moving in, getting a rake stun onto Valido. Wealthy man looking for some damage. Packrat backs him up, but Super Frogs are just walking all over Never Lucky. I mean, it's. Not looking too good for Packrat's balance, Druid. Absolutely zero pressure for the team of Never Lucky. They're not even denting the health bars of Super Frogs, let alone even working down the Cubsy's mana. There, there's really only one moment in time where the Super Frogs even need to be wary or even respect the damage that Never Lucky can dish out. That is during the incarnation window. Finally, some damage at least on Chanimal, but a double Mortal Coil could completely disengage that situation. Zack could even be attacked here from Channel if he wants to. Packrat's just getting slapped by Wealthy Man in midfield. Zack can't connect any heals. He's caught in crowd control, and this composition is absolutely not working for Never Lucky. The chain gets dropped. No, they follow it up. One more polymorph. They need a bash. They go for the rake stun instead. Nice Shadow Meld re-stealth. Doesn't seem to be like enough crowd control to take Packrat's down. Avenging Wrath allows Zack to bounce back into the fight, but they've expended a huge amount of their defensive arsenal to recover from that moment. Yep, and this is the kind of control I was talking about. Super Frogs are just so on point in terms of their crowd control that never lucky, they just don't have enough stops. They don't have enough interrupts. The Holy Paladin just doesn't provide any. You have Valido with Wind Shear and Grounding, but that's really the only threat. Solar Beam, a really long cooldown for Packrath to actually help shut down some of these casts. And it's just really difficult here for Never Lucky. Like I said, they needed to try to find an all-in kill attempt. 52 seconds left on that incarnation. That's going to be a moment for Packrats to get really aggressive. cubsy has been able to maintain his mana quite well in this situation. You see Dark Soul available. Chanimal's going to be looking to get aggressive potentially with his next Infernals, which are up in 42 seconds. But the last time we saw Packrats get aggressive with the incarnation, Chanimal, he was able to just drop out the Infernals, deny a lot of that pressure with the Shadow Fury. You can see Wealthy Man has Icy Veins rotating up as well. Just so much in favor of Super Frogs. Yeah, it's looking better and better for them as they look to advance to match point and then basically never lucky are just praying that the Mew Mew Kitty Cat lose their next two series, which is possible. It's, it's possible, but you really don't want to leave the fate of your qualification in the hands of another team, so... Never lucky, you need to go back to the drawing board. Unfortunately for them, if they lose here, and because they lost a blind pick, if they do try the Elemental Shaman Destruction Warlock, most certainly the Super Frogs have an answer for it in their arsenal, and they'll have to battle it blind twice in a row. So things are not looking good for Never Lucky, despite their victory versus the move earlier today. It's looking more and more to be the case that Mew Mew Kitty Cats are going to be our fourth and last team qualifying for the Spring Finals. Fleeto gets bursted down. Grounding Totem barely in time to redirect some damage. Packrats is still just not getting any counter pressure out outside of Incarnation. Everyone at full health, although Incarnation is available. Curious to see when Packrats decides to pull that punch. With dampening so high, he needs to get something done with it. Fleeto gets bursted down to half. 
He's in trouble. Zach is crowd controlled. Pack rats is whittled away. Two targets low on health, and Zach can't heal. Any more crowd control, and it's likely to close the match. Valido's really disrespecting the damage, not trading that astral shift, holding onto it as long as possible, managing to get away with it. Divine favor, big heal. Wealthy man gets bursted down. That's the lightning lasso combo. The wombo combo from Never Lucky does not get them an ice block at 30% dampening, and they continue to fall behind. Yeah, as soon as Packrats uses that incarnation, Channel immediately counter pressures with the Infernals. And now Packrats, you can see, he's having to play defensive. He's just using travel for him, kiting away, not really able to min-max his damage. So, never lucky, they have one or two globals with incarnation where they can try to get some damage rolling. Other than that, Packrats is just forced so defensive. Wealthy man, Channel exclusively using their interrupts onto Packrat, really denying his ability to throw out star surges. Now Channel moving forward, landing a Chaos Bolt. Alito grounds it, but I just don't know what the game plan is for Never Lucky. Like, I can't help but feel they just, like, decided this composition would work well into Super Frogs without too much thought into it, because this is not working out at all. Uh, they're basically going to have to hope that the Super Frogs make a mistake on uh, the next Lightning And maybe they do. Wealthy Man's actually taking pressure. It's not available, though, for another three minutes. And three minutes from now, I'm bad at math here. That's a lot of math. It's likely around 50% dampening. The, at least Zach has mana to make it that far, but that's going to be so tough. I'm wondering maybe at 50% dampening, the Boomkin's damage then becomes more relevant outside of Incarnation, and then perhaps they can develop some momentum. It's it's possible they're gonna have to navigate through the icy veins of wealthy man though and cubs He can just chill and drink 80 yards away whenever he wants because they're totally pinned down So there won't be any mana advantage It's gonna have to be nothing but pressure for the team of never lucky to find a kill Perfect coordination and honestly mistakes from the super frogs I think for never lucky to find victory here on game number two Likely they will have to go back to the composition drawing board and think of a better answer if they want to stay alive in the tournament and keep their hopes and dreams of going to the spring final still in it here today. Yeah, Wealthy Man moving forward, gets caught into a lightning lasso. Cubsy denies it with the iron bark. Now Hammer Justice the Temp on the Cubsy. What are they going to get done? Wealthy Man full health. Now he uses the Icy Veins, looking to get hyper aggressive. Drops the Frozen Orb, 40% dampening. What is that going to do? Blizzard gets cast out. Channel moving forward with Wealthy Man. They're trying to generate some pressure, but Valido actually getting a lot of damage out on Wealthy Man. Elemental Shamans, they can burst you down relatively quickly. Valido and Packrats can line up their burst. They could just blow someone out of the water very quickly in this matchup. If you look at Mana, Zach hasn't had to drink at all. His mana's doing quite well. Cubsy has snuck away a few times, but he's looking healthy also. Wealthy Man having to run away. And like I kind of talked about, Wealthy Man, Safeguard proc, still a lot of pressure, playing it out greedy, not using his Ice Block, but this is what I'm talking about. Wealthy Man and Channel, when they're in trouble, they just run into midfield. And then all of a sudden, Channel, Wealthy Man, with their cast of damage, can really overwhelm Valido and Packrats. Curious to see what Packrats can get done. They've made it to that incarnation, but they're on the back foot. And they need to recover before they can go for it. Cubsy, he is likely, I th I, they have to go after Cubsy with the Lightning Lasso. They just need to all in Cubsy, try and burst him down with the Feral Affinity. I don't see anyone else going down unless they make a mistake with Nether Ward and Ice Block. Those can just immediately deny all damage from the team of Never Lucky. Whereas Cubsy, I think, could die through Barkskin and through his Glider's Medallion this deep into dampening. Although if he never compromises his positioning and stays as far away as he is, that just simply isn't an option because Never Lucky will have to go too far into the map to be able to find a kill at that point. So we are starting to see the pressure mount for the Super Frogs at 50% dampening. Zach is holding out onto a lot of defensive cooldowns. Maybe an ultimate sacrifice, big push, trying to overwhelm while you are immune to damage and redirecting it. This could be potential. Packrats needs to be so precise here with this incarnation because it's likely the last one that he is going to get of the game. He needs to get through two ice blocks. So Wealthy Man should not be the target. You rely on him just not pressing an ice block if you do that. Maybe you overwhelm Channel through on ending resolve. Ooh, there it is. They're still trying to go after Well, He's actually having to run away during his incarnation. This is not what you want to see from Packrats, unless this was an Arcanic Pulsar incarnation. We'll find out if it falls here shortly. This will be the case. They're the ones dying during incarnation. This is just so devastating for Never Lucky. And that one Chaos Bolt lands. Zach now getting low. It's difficult for the Holy Paladin to keep himself alive. Divine Favor tops itself off. We are at 54% dampening. How high will we get? Just such a defensive strategy coming in from Never Lucky. Consistently, constantly running away in this matchup, but 
Eventually, just Blizzard, Frozen Orb, they will inevitably kill you in this matchup. Wealthy Man just needs to make sure he's uh, very careful in this matchup. I really feel like Tanimal has to be the one that's pushing in, getting aggressive, and he does. Infernals get dropped out. Mortal Coil, but once again, never lucky. They're oh. running. They're hiding. Bolito finally pressed Stormkeeper. I think it's been the better part of four and a half minutes. He pressed it and got a huge amount of damage. Wondering if he is feeling a little bit bad about not finding that sooner. His whole team now getting overwhelmed. Cubs even moving in, tossing out some extra damage that Zack simply doesn't have throughput to deal with. Frozen Orb is crashing in on one side. Chanimal's getting in on the fight, ready to end this at 60% damp, but he gets cloned up, doesn't want to throw, so he's going to sit through it. Zack gets Gladiator's Maledix. He can't heal through that. He's waiting for it to fade. Weltman gets bursted. Temporal Shield. This could be a cross kill, potentially. Lido gets interrupted on his support, but all three members low. Cubsy's mana suddenly tapped out of nowhere with basically nothing left. Look at it. Oom, Cubsy. Although there's still two ice blocks, still an unending resolve. Packrats is a minute and 16 away from the incarnation. I think this is going to be a bit of a ballroom blitz, Ben. I, I actually think sparks are going to fly deeper into the match. Uh, maybe we even end up seeing a one versus one if this pace keeps up. Well, you know me, Sid, I love a good dance-off, and that's exactly what this is looking to be at 63% dampening. Things becoming more and more difficult. Icy Veins gets traded out by Wealthy Man, wants to get really aggressive. Channel relaying his Demonic Circle, and you can see this is where Wealthy Man is in trouble, though. Temporal Shield forced to blink away, and Bolito and Packrass have been deflecting Wealthy Man, not allowing him to lay down that Blizzard and Frozen Orb as often as he'd really like. You look at Mana, Zack still doing okay, but 66% dampening, I'm not sure it's mana he really needs to be concerned with. All right, so let's see what they can get done here. 30 seconds away from that incarnation of pack rats. Cubsy, though, has regenerated mana, and with Innervate active, has a bunch of free healing at this moment in time, is likely to stabilize his team. Zack, on the other hand, has Avenging Wrath. Everything is going to come down to one big push. Valido activating that greater primal elemental with that fire elemental. He's going to be doing a ton of damage. Super Frogs need to be ready for it. Stormkeeper comes up soon, as well as Incarnation, but Packrats gets clotheslined by Chanimal's Mortal Coil. Packrats retreats away in bear form. Valido, though, gets stunned. He was left behind. Huge hit swings in. He gets Muscular Protection down with a stun, but even still, Ursula's Vortex pulls him back into the fight. Triple Shadow Fury, Triple Cataclysm. Shadowmole looks to close. Avenging Wrath up just in the nick of time. Zack battles back. Packrats activates Incarnation, trying to toss out some damage and force the Super Frogs away. And even though they were getting overwhelmed, they are showing signs of life here at 71% dampening. I think we're almost going to break records in this match. We definitely could. All three members of Super Frogs actually rotting down. The consistent pressure of Packrats right now is paying dividends for the team of Never Lucky. Are they going to be able to do it? This game was looking so hopeless for them. But now Chanimal, he's running and hiding. Wealthy Man's feeling scared. Drops the Blizzard, still has to run away. Cubsy's mana is not looking good. Have Never Lucky really found the answer? Is it really Holy Paladin? Boom Kit Elemental Shaman at 75% dampening. Uh, chaos Big ball. Chaos Bull on Valido. Grounding Totem denies that damage. Never luck, he's still holding on. That is an angry Infernal. It's both teams, all six members in trouble of dying at this point. 75% dampening. There's nothing left. Packrat's so low on health, there's no mana in the tank for either side. Any Boom. member could die. Packrats falls first. Can Valido close any sort of counter pressure? No. Chaos Bullet closed out. And despite being low on health, any amount of health high. Definitely maybe frustration on the part of Never Lucky as well. They do not want to be stalled out anymore by the Super Frogs. I'm just curious as to when in the fight they will decide to go for this aggressive strategy. Will they try and stall and wait similarly to Method Orange or will they just get into the deep end as soon as possible? Well, Zach's going to be marching forward with Valido. Looks like Never Lucky, they want to get aggressive early on. Who is the main target? How many purges are we going to be seeing out of Cola? Like you said, Method Synergy, Mez, Trill, and Cola, they sort of pioneered that all-in strategy, just offensive purge after offensive purge. Unfortunately, a Seduce on Nicola is going to be broken by a Blizzard into a full Polymorph, though. Zach could be in some trouble. They're looking to run down Wealthy Man in this situation. He deflects early on with Temporal Shield, but Zach already trading out his Touch of Karma wants to get hyper-aggressive. Surprising that they're actually going after Wealthy Man. Maybe Cubsy preparing for himself to be the target and trying to catch him off guard by going after Wealthy Man instead. Here on Dalaran Sewers, Wealthy Man is dealing with the pressure quite effectively, keeping Zach on the ropes as well. There is a counter spell available that Colo needs to try and fake out. He's now bashed. Zack is in trouble and on the run. Ducking for cover. Multiple Gladiators Maledicts absorbing a ton of heals. Colo reconnects. 
Spelling off that healing absorption, looking to fake cast a counter spell on this healing wave. If Colo gets into he fake cast the counter spell. Well done on Colo's part. He can now stabilize the team quite easily. Yeah, definitely, without that interrupt out of the way, Colo should be able to top off his team. But all three members eating a blizzard, eating a frozen orb right now as they rot down just a little bit. Cubsy position very far away. I think that's likely where he wants to be in this matchup. Colo actually taking quite a bit of damage right now. A little bit of burst pressure. What are Channimals and Wealthy Man going to be able to do? So, like you said, Wealthy Man so far has been dealing with the pressure quite well. They were looking for an all-in onto Wealthy Man, but his ability to kite in this matchup, back up from Channimal, Cubsy healing him up. Super Frogs has so far been able to deflect the early attacks. All right, let's see if Never Lucky can maintain for an all-in kill with the purge strategy. It's the only reason we would see Colo switch in on the Restoration Shaman, banking on his main healing specialization that he's played for quite a long time. Perhaps the main is enough to overwhelm the Super Frogs. First Ice Block forced. There is signs of life for Never Lucky in the lower bracket. If they manage to pull this off, Likely we see them go head to head with the Mew Mew Kitty Cats tomorrow in the lower bracket. I shouldn't count the Mew Mew Kitty Cats out, but based on history, you would expect that result. So if Never Lucky can somehow crawl back in this, they need to reverse sweep three in a row, keep their qualification dreams alive. But this is the best match so far in terms of pressure we've seen. Yeah, definitely. You can see Colo's mana is not doing too great right now. Another one of those seduces from Channimal into a full polymorph. Channimal lining up a big Chaos Bolt. Going to be landing on a Zack. That trades out for Anti-Magic Zone and the Touch of Karma of Zack in that particular situation. So Zack not really working with too many defensives right now. Zack getting low. Has to use the Diffuse Magic as well. Another Chaos Bolt lands. Zack, what is he going to do? He needs to be able to get away. Colo forced to use his Spirit Link Totem. And things are falling apart for Never Lucky. This is starting to look grim for Colo here. It's on match point, and if they lose here, everything rides on the Mew Mew Kitty Cats losing their two series tomorrow. And if they don't, then they will be the fourth team from North America. In the meantime, though, as things are falling apart, they get the second ice block. Cubsy's almost tapped on mana, and suddenly it's anyone's match here in what could be the final seconds. Colo has three members low on health, and he's got Ascendants. He could stabilize the team if he's able to get cast and heals off, going for a healing rain, allowing Valida to stabilize in midfield with Death Strike, and manages to pull together a recovery. Infernals have landed. Colo gets seduced. Double shot of Fury. Great setup by Channimal. He's ready to close this out, but Valido denies the kill. Zack gets swapped, too. He overextends. He leaves Colo behind. Gets Ursula's Vortex back into line of sight. Ray of Frost gets winchered in the nick of time by Colo. Zack able to wrap around the corner, start to stabilize. Colo trinkets out of Polymorph to stay up. Maybe a bit of a precautionary Glider's Medallion might not have been necessary. Cubsy gets crowd controlled. Paralysis into Cap Totem, but Valido is low on health. Pressure still maintains for both teams. This Windwalker Deathlight composition isn't looking too bad. Wealthy Man doesn't have another Ice Block for quite some time. Zack can make an offensive trade with his Touch of Karma if he really needs to. And that might be the added bit of damage that they need. I really want to see it after this uh, Iron Bark from Cubsy. Unfortunately, Zack just doesn't have enough time. Looking to get really aggressive. There's the Asphyxiate stun. Full stun onto Wealthy Man as well. Big pressure here from Never Lucky, but Wealthy Man has been dealing with the pressure. He has a Temporal Shield. He's doing a good job kiting. Colo getting in a position. Zack once again getting swatted away by Wealthy Man and Channimal, forcing him to play a little bit defensive here. Colo really doesn't have too much left in terms of defensive cooldowns. He trades out his Ascendants, looking to empower his heals, and ends up topping off Zack with Channimal still ripping in. Channimal is going to be the X Factor if Wealthy Man is the target. He can be the playmaker. He can just close this series out and advance and likely secure Mew Mew Kitty Cat's spot towards the finals. Zack gets bursted. Huge damage to follow that up. Wealthy Man gets bursted back in a huge comeback. Tons of damage. He's getting purged out. Wealthy Man will fall. Colo stays in it, but needs to battle it back two more games in a row. You cannot count out Never Lucky here. If we do see them fall, the day becomes simple tomorrow. Win one and myself. If I can make Rich Campbell think, I've made my day. Wow. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I think that was shots fired. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Rich. Oh. Super Frogs <laughs> <laughs> looking to close this one out. Never Lucky has tried a plethora of compositions there. They've made us all think, and they have definitely made us all believe. The question is, can they get two wins in a row, or is it going to be all up to Jamili and his squad, whether or not they make it to land?
Never lucky stay alive in the lower bracket, but they have to win two games in a row. And Super Frogs can counter comp and counter map their opponents as well. So I'm curious if Never Lucky can overcome that overwhelming disadvantage. Wealthy Man getting crushed in the earlier stages of this fight here on Ashamane's fall. Cubsy struggling to heal, finally starting to recover with the Iron Bark's defense activated. But even still, never lucky. Their damage looks pretty good if they can stay on target. Chanimals, once again, is going to be the playmaker of the team. And I am curious to see what he can get done aggressively left open for this long. Yeah, definitely. Wealthy Man's still getting low, though. This could be the first ice block. And like we saw on Dalaran Sewers, he was such a prime target. Wealthy Man getting grip back, catching a huge heal. Finally, Colo actually taking a little bit of pressure as well. Yeah, all six members are definitely getting bursted down right now. You can see Valido rotting down, Zach as well. Colo caught in midfield. This is not the position you want to be in. Colo with no trinket and a full bash. He gets, gets deleted, erased from the arena by Chanimal Chaos Bolt. And unfortunately for never way to land, but look at who they have to do that against the boys and super frogs, the number two team in North America, as far as point standings are concerned, and the number one team, as far as point standings are feed versus the fake zebras. We're all tied up one and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history, the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.